here we are. Here we are. On the terrazzo at Il Terrazzo Carmine's. What are we drinking? This is a Campari spritzer. It's kind of a light drink, summertime drink. It's Campari, which has a little bit of bitterness to it, Prosecco, and then a splash of uh, soda water or, or uh, some type of soda if you want. It's fancy. It looks fancier than it is. It's just kind of a light, refreshing drink for the summertime. So do you drink it out of the straw or you do you drink no, it? No, I, I would take the orange and drop it into it. And then I would kind of mix up the Prosecco with the uh, Campari. And then I would take a little sip and See what it tastes like. All right. Well, what made you choose this restaurant in Seattle? You've been here a couple of years now on the job. My uh, name is Francis. My mother was full-blown Italian. Zeratini was my mother's, or is my mother's maiden name uh, from just outside of Venice. So kind of grew up in the west end of Sault Ste. Marie. Sault Ste. Marie is probably about 85% Italian. My neighborhood was probably 100% Italian. Everybody had kind of their own garden in the backyard. Next door was Teddy Casagrande. He had a bocce court in his backyard. So after dinner, all the men would come and play bocce and the losers had to buy the winners their beer and buy their own beer from Teddy. So he was basically bootlegging to make a little extra. Well, what do you think of Seattle thus far? I love it. My hometown is kind of Northern Ontario, kind of all the Great Lakes come together. So a lot of similarities with the water. So a lot of people already know that you're the general manager of the Seattle Kraken. But you had this whole great past life as a professional hockey player, Hockey Hall of Famer, Stanley Cup, 1,700 games, 23 years, right? But I think the one thing that stands out, the three-time winner of the Lady Bing Trophy. <laughs> what are you most proud of? I think as a kid growing up, you always want to play in the NHL, and your dream is to win the Stanley Cup. So uh, being able to do that twice was extremely exciting for me. And when you get recognized on the personal front, that's that's exciting. Lady Bing combines kind of sort of your, your play with sportsmanship. This is your second go around as general manager. You coming from Carolina. What did you learn from that first experience with the Hurricanes? I think when you get relieved of your duties, you get to step away and see kind of what's happened there. And you dabbled in commercial real estate. I did, yeah. I uh, decided when I was kind of out that I was probably done with hockey and Went back to school, studied, went through all the tests and uh, got my, my real estate license. But then Seattle called and I thought, this is too good an opportunity to pass up. You had to kind of balance the, the idea of moving and maintaining everything in Carolina, right? Our plan was to get out the first half of, of 20 and then, uh, you know, the pandemic hit in February. And as an organization, we sent everybody home and started doing everything via Zoom like a lot of people the last 18 months. How complicated did that make starting up the, the organization, starting up the scouting department, your coaches, you know, finding your head coach by, by doing it all on the East Coast? I hired probably 40, 50 people and I didn't meet a lot of them until probably the last four months. Certainly on the hockey front, it was way more challenging with the season getting shut down and then playing in a bubble, not being able to get in there and watch games live, having to watch things on TV or rewatch them on video. Just for you personally, I mean, what was it like to balance starting a new job? How do you move the pandemic, health and safety? Certainly on, on the home front, you know, my middle son moved back home. So uh, at the time we had five of us living at home throughout the pandemic. It was great. Uh, to have everybody home, probably a lot more work for my wife and cooking for five every night. A little bit more challenging in the sense, you know, I, I probably didn't realize I'd have to do as much picking out tiles and carpets and rubber stuff and paint colorings. Uh, but, you know, you get to design the locker rooms and, and sort of go through that process. A little more challenging that they're sending you stuff in the mail to look at it. And now that you've had time to reflect, how do you think that expansion draft went? Did it live up to all your hopes and dreams? There were some deals we probably could have done to get a pick here, a pick there, but we would have had to take on a dead contract or dead money in essence, and uh, I didn't think that was fair to our fans. And how much did character matter in who you picked? I think that was a big part. Uh, you know, I've done it in the past, and, and we did it again on this draft with these guys. We, we felt the question, uh, character was an issue. We took them off our amateur draft. We wouldn't, wouldn't look at drafting them. You didn't have any leaks. All the leaks came from the rest of the league. <laughs> I mean, the, the nickname that somebody's already coined, Fort Knox Francis. Um, and nothing ever gets out of Fort Knox. Yeah, no, it's, you know, we share that with all our staff internally. Um, I think our organization has done a great job of that. There was no leak on the brand launch. There was no leak on Climate Pledge Arena. And 
Um, you know, from our standpoint, there wasn't a leak on the head coach. But I'm sure you're excited to get off Zoom. It is fun to get <laughs> off Zoom, no question. Yeah. Well, here's to getting off Zoom. Yeah, We've been absolutely. talking so much, we haven't been drinking. This yeah. is nice. Yeah, we haven't really day. commented on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for sharing a drink.